Hi there and welcome back. Drawing Database, Professor Mark Leone. And today we're going to spend 15 minutes and look at the drawings of one of Germany's and Europe's most famous artists of any time, Renaissance, Northern Renaissance artist, genius, Albrecht Dürer, born in 1471 and died in 1528, both born and died in Nuremberg, Germany. So what we see in Albrecht Dürer is the height of the Northern European Renaissance um, before the Baroque and obviously um, uh, neoclassicism, certainly well before that. But what we see in Albrecht Dürer is a very well-studied and well-trained um, artist in figurative uh, Northern European tradition, very trompe l'oeil very more tightly controlled drawing style if you compare that to some of the other artists we've highlighted thus far. What we see here is a influence in my, my mind, my opinion, by Raphael. Very controlled kind of contouring ink line. Let me change the color on that so we can see that a little bit more easier. I believe that that's going to change. Maybe not. Um, and that's fine. So what we see is a, a, a very kind of controlled graphic quality, linear quality. Most of these, this particular, these, these figures are drawn um, out of his imagination, out of his head. We do see some proportion, proportional oddities in the length of the torso, which lends me to believe this was a study from um, fantasy out of his head, not only practicing um, a pose of action, lifting figures away from the ground. So uh, pushing and pulling gravity, but also defining his and heightening his wonderful understanding of also of anatomy. These also favor quite well the sketchbook drawings and ink drawings and studies of Leonardo. So it seems that you know he certainly was influenced by the Italian Renaissance, and of course it has all the wonderful attributes of hatching and cross hatching. Again, an understanding of of gesture and movement. And then a real controlled sense of uh, anatomy, visual timing with proportion to line weight variation, and a really nice, really controlled kind of hatch line mark, which makes Dewar so sophisticated for any time. Here we see a, see a lovely study of an older woman or cloistered woman, covered woman here, perhaps, and it looks like dry media, some type of chalk or charcoal type uh, material heightened in white on somewhat toned paper so we hear we see the lovely tilt of the axis of the facial features here we can go in a little bit deeper I think that'll that'll also help thank you and then um, we see that wonderful control beautiful control of not only anatomy and the skull structure the facial structure of the head but also the wonderful control of folds of drapery and of cloth. So you get a little bit of both in one uh, study here of Durer. And you see the soft modulation of the blending with some kind of stump or his own hand. And then the overturning and underturning and tilting and twisting and pivoting of the wonderful drapery. She's lit from the top left, very strong kind of Renaissance light from uh, high above into one side. So we generally get a half lit situation, uh, half in uh, light here and a half in dark there to give strong illumination uh, to the figure and to the model and the great control of anatomy that uh, we see all over in a softer material. So it makes this a, a wonderful study. And here we have an interesting drawing by Dewar. I found this and I thought it'd be worth showing a little bit more of a comical kind of play on. Um, what looks to be a working class or maybe even working poor of that time. Perhaps they were uh, uh, oyster fishermen, a uh, couple here playing um, kind of sardonically or uh, comically with one another. Uh, there's a kind of intimacy that obviously is going on here and then also in there. So they, they know each other quite well. Maybe after a long day's work, they're getting a little maybe a little frisky or romantic, we don't know for sure. But what we can analyze is the, the, the craft of Dewar's study, his classic um, ink technique of out contouring outlines. Notice the bulbous quality of all the forms where they 
are really um, bulbous and then they get pinched at the joints here and here to really get the bulbous sense of uh, quality of the roundness of these forms very much a renaissance technique and then again we see the hatched hatched marks in the rhythm of the hatch marks let's go in a little deeper here so it's, we can see a little bit of this technique further and get deeper into the study there in the wonderful kind of control of the again the hair the different styles of hair with the curvilinear marks it's not overly drawn but just enough information to get us the the style of hair and then of course he heightens the drawing by some um, occasional little tinting or washes probably in a, a type of watercolor and they're us using probably an ink that is not water soluble or doesn't dissolve after laid down so a little tin tinting of the part of the color in of the forms uh, and also the skin tone of our models some of my favorite works by Durer are portraits not only self portraits but portraits of others here we can see this probably around 1521 in the classic Albert Dewar, one of the more classic signatures in all of art history. Um, and we see the wonderful technique in black chalk or a type of conte or, or crayon, if you will. But the wonderful control of not only the forms of the fashion, but the uh, head structure here uh, as well by Dewar, side plane of the head, the mandible area, and then the center line, eye line, nose in all our classic landmarks here. And then of course, what, what is really lovely is the rhythmic quality of the fur, fur coat that he gets into. He repeats that in the uh, hatching and contouring, if you will, of the beard into the hat. And then also even in the background. So that's one thing we talk about here with my students is how to resolve backgrounds pretty early in your drawing to set up the contrast against the model of the figure and how that can heighten the sense of uh, making it the focal point, especially in the head and shoulder area. And this is kind of quintessential Albert Dewar and his stylings. Here we have an interesting drawing of what looks like to be uh, some type of retribution maybe uh, by two women here against the, the male figure. Maybe there was something that happened in the past, some kind of misbehavior of uh, some awful sort. And there is some kind of revenge. I don't know the exact story. But what again, what we're here to do is also analyze the drawing style of uh, Durer. And more so than anything, the all of the figures, the the uh, the three figures here, kind of an inverted sort of our sideways triangle that's laid in, if you will, um, are framed by the lovely and lush background rendering of the foliage, the trees, um, the cherub here in the harp and material on the ground. Perhaps these two women uh, were lovers of this particular male and they found out that this uh, male was um, involved with both of them. I don't know the story, but we see the, the drama, the focal point here, but we move up into the composition here and get this over and then around. As this tree is lazily placed, on a curb to move us back over and back into back over and back into this situation to continue us around around there that's a lot of ugly lines let's take that out but I think you're starting hopefully to get the idea of how they're moved in an in and out around and over kind of composition and you notice this curve back in and notice how that curve takes us back out and the back in and around. So there's always some sense of kind of circular movement, a rounded kind of movement. And then again, we get the beautiful contouring, uh, cross contouring of a simple cylinder of all the forms of the trees, but also the same thing into the structures of the legs, which are handled the same thing. Sometimes I have students tell me, you know, I've never drawn a tree before or, or a tiger or a baby. I'm like, well, you've drawn the figure quite a bit. And, it, and it, it's really the same thinking. What, what is important is the thinking rather than the, the sophistication of the object or the difference of the object. That helps, I think, you to think of it and be more dynamic with subject matter. Here we have a classic study of hands by Durer. We've got one of two iconic imagery, and I'll, I'll save the, the, um, the most famous one for last. But we see the wonderful ink uh, technique both in the black ink and also what looks to be white ink and toned paper or this 
this kind of tone. This is probably a different color. It's probably a black and white image, but it's what I could find. And what we see with Dura is not only the control of hand anatomy in thinking of each change as a divot change, but also the cylindrical quality of the indication of the marks to give it a cross contouring hatched approach that is very realistic but gives you a sausage like quality. Notice how he places intense darks at points of cast shadows where he needs them. Um, and then he again cross contours in both not only the white chalk but also the darker chalk to mimic the shadow pattern, coarse shadowing in the darkest shadows but also in the reflected light of the figure being reflected back um, from the book onto the hands going a little bit deeper so we can uh, see that a little bit further. Look how lovely that the the quality of the rendering, the sophistication and clarity of it as well is uh, quintessential Albrecht Dürer and we can really tell it's a Dürer when we get to see these types of stylizations. Notice slightly uh, diffuse lines, slight broken line in through here, strong darks where we need them to signal um, on the shadow side, a cast shadow here, and then the coarse shadow toning of the marks in through here, and even also in the nail. You can really break this drawing down into three values, can't you? It's the tone here, that's one. The light, it's two. And the, sh the darker shadow tone, roughly three, and maybe this dark in through here, a little bit four. But with a nice toned paper in, now currently you can use uh, colored inks, or you can use gouache for the white, or acrylic paint for the white we get the sense that um, we too can involve ourselves in, again, the technique of Dürer's lovely study. And again, the book is based on just a simple rectangular cube in a slight, just well, probably one point, but slight two point, three point as we look down onto the book. And then just the simple um, editing of the pages of the book to get a sense of a large kind of thick tone, maybe a Bible, maybe some bookmarking in through here, and some downward strokes in shadow to get the sense of three-dimensional planing of the uh, book in hand. And we get a nice geometric quality along with the organic quality of the hands drawn here. And it looks like 1506 down here at the bottom in the quintessential Albrecht Dewar uh, signature. Probably one of the more famous uh, portrait studies uh, from Albert Dürer, an Af a man of African descent here in Northern Europe in around 1508, in the lovely uh, control of the structure of the human form, the box-like quality of the head, and in the softening of the anatomical features make it a real kind of tour de force in drawing, chalk drawing for that time in 1508. And we get just a simple understanding of, of, of contouring around forms, contouring very softly and smoothly, stumping out a little smooth transition. It's not a very harsh drawing with a little bit of lighting, maybe natural lighting coming from the top right a little bit. It puts him in slight shadow. And the wonderful, uh, uh, you know, very detailed drawing of the, the head structure, but it works because of the intensity and the understanding of the actual form of the head. We're talking about the hair and then also the simple value changes from dark mid-tones to lighter tones to help out the three-dimensional form of the drawing. And now lastly, everyone's probably most recognizable image and probably Albert Dewar's most recognizable drawing is the study of the praying hands here. Um, and, you know, we see, see this kind of image and reproductions in all kinds of homes across probably the Western world, certainly here also in the United States. But we get a lovely understanding of uh, Dürer's rich understanding of observational drawing technique, the accuracy within the hand structure itself, the dimensionality or turning of the forms of the hand, both the the major palm group, the, the hypothenar and the thenar area, hypothenar here, and the conception of the hand in the beginning as a blocky form, as it turns in the side plane to a front plane and then around, around the back, turning over and turning over and cuffing over and turning. But we also get a sense of his uh, wonderful quality of turning those uh, more blunt, blocky forms into more cylindrical forms. Here we can get in deeper uh, to the drawing and see the quality 
in the draftsmanship. So we, we see that the drawing is lit from the uh, top uh, or side left, actually. And um, we see where the light breaks in through here. It's not a strong cast shadow, um, but perhaps, or excuse me, form shadow with core shadow, but enough of it to signify the cylindrical quality that he gets into with the veining in through here and around of the figures. This is important to note how his control of edges is important. We get a boundary edge here, which is, which is a, a harsher, uh, conclusive ending with the forms and the digits. We get wonderful anatomy with the control in change of each direction of the digit. Once we get a direction, we get a change, and we must make that change come alive, even with every finger digit there'll be a change at each phalange there. That's important. And then the wonderful technique of, of hatching and contour hatching across the form over the top of the vein, this the, the kind of the apex here, and then down the back, he leaves the tone of the paper. And then the wonderful inclusions of dark with cast shadows within the L shadow, the shadow form itself. So notice the edge control, hard edge, softer edges, some hard edge with the folding, soft and then another hard edge cast shadow, uh, softer edges, conclusive ending shadow, uh, a somewhat soft edge with a cast shadow within the shadow and then around the figure again. again. And then lastly, it's important to look at his, his understanding and structure of looking at fingernails and how truly curved they are as they look at this, how it really curves around the forms of the, the fingertips and contour around in a very cylindrical kind of manner, right? The, the if we look at this fingernail here, how it really turns and mimics the overall understructure of the, the finger quite, quite conclu conclusively in quite, again, quite lovely with the wonderful rendering and the iconic praying hands of Albrecht Dürer.